Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and six years ago I did a video talking about Plex and what it is all about. Undoubtedly, you have seen this icon on your Roku or on your smart TV, and you're probably wondering what this Plex app does. And we described what it was uh, back in 2015, but it's changed quite a bit since then, and I thought I would update it. And this is going to be a two-parter where we're going to begin with the basics in this video and then explore some of the more advanced topics in a future one. Now, if you're not familiar with Plex, it has two components to it at the top level. The first is being a personal media server where you install some software on a PC in your home, you load up all of the movies and music that you have in your collection, and it allows you to watch that content anywhere on anything. And it's very flexible for that. We've covered a lot of the different features of Plex in past videos. But recently, they added a new feature to the mix, which is free content that doesn't require you having to set up your own server or anything else. You just go on your favorite device, load up Plex, and start watching. So I thought what we would do in this video is describe how that free content works, give you an idea as to where you can find everything and how to sync it all up between devices. And then in a future video, we'll cover the concepts involved with personal media serving. And I think that should get us up to date on what Plex is all about these days. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, that this is a paid sponsorship by Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now, starting with the free content you can find on the Plex app. All right, so we're gonna load up Plex here from scratch on this Roku. We haven't loaded it up on this device before. And what'll happen here is we'll get our little animation going and then we'll be brought to this screen, uh, which asks you if you want to have a free account or not. And you can get access to the entire Plex feature set as a guest. And we're going to start as a guest, but we'll talk more about why you might want an account a little bit later in the video because you can sync up your media consumption between devices. Now, when you first load up Plex, you're going to be brought to a screen similar to this one. This is the Home tab, and here you'll get a bunch of content recommendations that are built based on what you've been watching on Plex. And if you have an account set up, those preferences will sync between devices and your home screen will look the same no matter which device that you're on. Uh, up here at the top, you've got a bunch of live recommendations and below that, you have TV show and movie recommendations. Now, before we jump into some of this stuff, let's take a look at what content you have available to you for free through Plex without having to install anything. Uh, so we'll start here with live TV. And this works exactly like it suggests. These are live streaming TV channels that are constantly running. And you can see what's coming up next on those channels by browsing the guide here. And then if you tuned in, maybe midway through something, it's going to start at the midpoint because again, this is all streaming live right now. And this is pretty handy because you can find a station that you like and just kind of leave it on in the background all day. Uh, so for example, this is a boating channel. I can tune into this one and take a look at some speed boats it looks like. Uh, and this again is uh, oftentimes very genre specific or very uh, topic specific. So if you're really into boats, you'll get boat content all day long. Plex is pretty good at updating these as well. So you'll see new channels come in over time as well. So you may want to go through and browse every once in a while. And what's cool is that if I go back here to the top, uh, you can see that when I pop in, it gives me what I last watched. So if you find something you like, it's going to be brought to the top of the screen so you can get back at it quickly when you load up that live TV section again. All right, let's take a look now at the on-demand content. What I'm gonna do is just hit the down arrow key to move over to that. Now, one of the fun things about Plex is that the people who develop Plex are huge TV and movie buffs, and they do some really cool curation of the content that's available. And you can often find things that you didn't even know were on Plex. So for example, today they've created a playlist called Van Dammit, uh, which is nothing but Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. And if I click on Lionheart here, uh, I'll get more information about the film. I can add it to my watch list. So if I wanted to build up a list of things that I want to watch later, I can get back at it that way. And then if I browse lower here, I can get access to the cast. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to see uh, what other movies Brian Thompson is in, I can click on his name and it will pull up other films available on Plex that he starred in. So you can kind of do a 
deep dive into some of the other actors on the film if you enjoyed their performances in the one that you're watching. Uh, many of these films also have some extras like the trailer, so you can get a feel for whether or not it's something you want to watch. And sometimes you've got clips and scenes and whatnot. You also have some reviews here too. And then of course there are things that are similar to this one. So once you begin going down one of these rabbit holes, you can spend a lot of time uh, looking for content and adding it to your list. And as you can see, they're constantly updating these fun little playlists to give you something to watch. And I've always liked the fact that they think about the kids too, so there's always some family-friendly stuff available on the list as well. Now, as you saw, this content section is labeled movies and shows, and you'll see TV shows in the mix here too. Uh, so I'm going to click on Third Rock from the Sun, which is currently in the That's So 90s section. I can catch up on all my old favorite shows there. And if we look at this, it looks a lot like the movie did. I can add it to my watch list and all of the other things that we saw with the movie a minute ago. But we also have all of the seasons of that show that are available. So if I go to season six here, I can then browse through each individual episode and get it started uh, from the menu here. So pretty easy to navigate. I can go back up to the top here and select a different season if I want. And again, TV shows are in the mix here right alongside your favorite movies. And I wanted to show you a couple of other things here too because there are other ways to find content. If you go to the category section, uh, you will be brought to just genre specific categories. So if you were really in the mood for sci-fi, you can click on science fiction here and see what sci-fi content is available on the platform. That can be pretty useful for narrowing down your choices. And then you also have the channel section here which will break it out by provider. So if I wanted to see just what was coming from the BBC, I can click on the BBC and it'll give me a list of every piece of BBC content that's currently available. And this stuff is going to be rotating in and out constantly. So the fun thing is every time you log in, there's always something new to watch. Now Plex also has a search feature built in. So if you go over to the search icon here and type in something, it will also give you a list of content that meets that search criteria. So if you are looking to see if something very specific is on Plex and you don't want to browse around for it, uh, you can do a search here and it will find it and break it out by content type. So for example, I just typed in Earth. I was looking for Earth Final Conflict. There it is. I can click on it and dive into all five seasons of the show through the search engine. Now, in addition to big Hollywood movies, you also get independently produced content and you'll find that in the web shows section here. And this will come from a lot of popular YouTubers, a lot of other video platforms send their content to Plex as well. And this is all integrated into the interface here. Now Plex is doing some of their curation. So when you first load up web shows, they'll have things broken out again by different topics here. So here's a bunch of tech content you can find. They've got some movie trailers here. They have personalities and culture. And what's nice is that you can subscribe to these channels and always get their new content every time you log in uh, because there's no algorithm that will drive your subscriptions and what you see. So for example, if you subscribe to my channel on the web shows, whenever I upload something new to Plex, that's going to show up every time you log into the web show section. So there's a lot of fun stuff to browse around here and I think we'll be seeing more kind of develop on the web show side as time goes on. And then they also have podcasts here too. And they do a really nice job curating this content because as you know, there are a lot of podcasts out there that are hard to sift through. So they're constantly looking for new and interesting things and they break it out by topic here. Uh, you can also go over to category searches too. So you can dive into, for example, fiction and see if there's a podcast that catches your interest here. And just like the web show section, you can subscribe to specific podcasts. And if you have your account set up, uh, those subscriptions will follow you from one device to the other. And that includes bookmarks. So you could start listening to a podcast through your television, hit pause, go to your phone, and pick up right where you left off, which can be pretty useful. We're going to look at that in just a second. Now, there's one last thing to look at on here, which is music. And this is the one area that requires a separate subscription. So Tidal is integrated with Plex. Tidal, of course, is a music service that you can subscribe to on a monthly basis. And so if you subscribe to Tidal, you can get access to all of your Tidal music through the Plex interface in one spot. Uh, but this is the only thing on this list of content that is not free. 
Now, if you wanted to remove something from the front screen here, you can just hit the left arrow, go to these little dots here and unpin it from the sidebar, and that way you won't have it on the screen anymore. If you ever want to get back at it, you can click more here and put it back in if you want. So we can go over here to Plex, and then I can just add music back in and get it back on the home screen. So if we jump back out there, you'll see music there again. Now what I'm going to do is sign into my account because I want to show you how this works when you do have an account and how useful that can be. Now depending on your device, you might be able to log in through that device. So for example, with my Roku here, I can just use my Roku account information to create a Plex account. If you want to create a Plex account on your computer, which might be the easier way to do it, uh, go to lon.tv slash Plex. That's my affiliate link. You can set up your account on the computer and they make it very easy to attach that account to other devices as you get them set up. So let me log into mine now and we'll see how I manage my free content and sync it up between my devices. All right, so I've got my iPhone out now running with the Plex app. And as you can see, I've got two pieces of content here that I am in the process of watching from the free Plex library. And if we jump over to the television, you will see that those pieces of content are there too. And there are bookmarks here. So you can see that little line underneath the Earth Final Conflict thumbnail indicates I'm about a quarter of the way through that episode. And that's also indicated here on the phone. So wherever you leave off on one device, it'll pick up on the other. Now, if I go over here to live TV and that grid comes up, uh, you'll see that the last three networks I've watched are front and center. And if I go and do the same here on the phone, uh, those three networks are also front and center on the phone interface. So again, anything you do on one will reflect on the other. Uh, real quick here, I'll show you podcasts because that's something you'll definitely be doing a lot on your phone. Uh, as you can see, the Mac Power Users was the most recent podcast that I listened to. If I go over to podcasts on the TV, same thing, got the bookmark going and everything is nicely synced up. I can also see what podcasts I'm subscribed to here and I can add and take away things on the TV, on my phone, on my tablet, and it all stays nicely in sync. So hopefully this gives you a good idea as to what Plex is all about. A couple of years ago, if you saw the Plex app on your TV or on your Roku, when you installed it, it didn't do anything because you had to have that local media server running on your network. You don't need that anymore to get going. So once you get the app installed, all of this free content will be ready and waiting for you. And then if you want to take the plunge into running your own media server, you can set it up and have that content appear alongside of what Plex is serving to you. And in the next video in this series, we're going to explore that side of Plex and some of the things you need to think about to get your personal media integrated along with what Plex is providing. But I think for a lot of people, uh, this is a great platform to consume free content it's got a lot of great stuff, and I think you'll enjoy browsing through all the different content that's available for you for free using the Plex app. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.